okay. So, that is assignment two. Let's talk about the volume visualization excitement. If I can find the lecture. That's assignment two. So we were talking about the origin of volume visualization data, cells versus voxels, interpolation, the volume visualization pipeline. That's what really that is. Now we're going to talk about actual volume visualization methods, like one I just described, slicing. Surface fitting methods, how do you derive surfaces? Is Kasha here? No, but that's like that's what she asked about as she asked that question can you derive surfaces from those slices last time and we're gonna talk about that it's good that she's not here <laughs> we're gonna talk about it on Monday too and we're gonna talk about some more topics but before we do that we need to introduce some terminology and one of the two of the terms are image order and object order Algorithms. So there are going to be lots of algorithms from, from this point on. You saw two kind of algorithms already. One was tree map construction and the other one was parallel coordinate plot construction. Volume visualization methods generally have, can be characterized into two different groups. Image order techniques and object order techniques. Image order algorithms or techniques have this kind of characteristic. There's a for loop that traverses the data in both of them. But this for loop traverses every pixel in image space. Right? This is image space. And the performance, how long the algorithm takes, is directly tied to how big the image is and the resolution of the image. In, there's a technique called ray casting, which we're going to talk about, that is an image order algorithm. An object order algorithm traverses object space. That's another fancy word for the 3D space before the projection in the volume visualization framework. So those last two stages, there was the, the, the image space and then there was the object space. And there's a projection from 3D to 2D. Algorithms that are object order traverse object space or 3D space, and they traverse the voxels. They perform some operation on every voxel. Right? And the, the performance is related to the number of voxels or the 3D resolution. Splatting is an example of this. Algorithm or marching cubes. Marching cubes, which we talk about, is also a good example. So, those are two very common terms that we use in the next few lectures. Here's a picture of, of the idea of the image order approach. This is the picture or the projection of the 3D data onto the 2D display. In this algorithm, this is the image space, there's like a person here, looking, and that's the image they see, and that's the data they're, they're trying to look at. The, the algorithm traverses the image space for each pixel, you know, from top to bottom, left to right, to cast a ray into the volume, sample the volume, and then derive a color and opacity. Right? So it's a pixel by pixel for loop. Image order. An object order is a voxel by voxel approach or traversal of the, of the data space. Right, so we start in the data space, that's a voxel, right, a volume element. We sample the volume element and we project the, the, the data onto the 2D image plane. That's uh, splatting. And the same is true about marching cubes. We traverse the, the volume 
voxel by voxel, right? and, until we've visited every voxel, sampled the data, and then projected the sampling onto the image plane. So that's called object corner approach. So those are two terms that we're going to use a lot. We talked about cells and voxels last time. This we introduced this terminology, and we're going to keep we're going to keep using those terms. A very common way to look at volume data is slice by slice. So you have 3D volume, and we kind of already saw some examples of this. And just taking a, a 2D planar slice through the volume and looking at the data on that 2D slice. Right? That's very, very common. It's the most common volume visualization technique, actually. This is an example. This is volume data here. And somebody has taken a slice through the volume data and then color mapped the data on that 2D slice to see what's inside. There's not much conceptual. There's not much conceptual complexity to talk about here. Any anybody want to guess what that could be? Like what that is by looking at that image. Like what that image is. Any detectives? Where's the attendance? The magic attendance register. Pass that for you. No high idea on the floor. <laughs> That's the funniest idea. I'll just put it on the floor. Thank you for your ambition. Anybody want to take a guess what this might be? I can't hear you. Music. Uh, it does look like a music staff, doesn't it? Let me just try something. <clears throat> I, you know, I, I, I thought that too when I first looked at it. I mean, I, I see the musical staff, but it's, it's not music. Is that, that's better, isn't it? Is that better? Or is that worse? Is it better? Yeah. <clears throat> So that, I'll, I'll give it away, this is flow data again. So this is a, an axis or a cylinder, and there is flow passing past this cylinder. It's, a, and I, it's actually a tapered cylinder, in other words, it's not perfect, the radius is not perfectly the same everywhere. And these are streamlines, so those streamlines are curves everywhere tangent to the flow. And then this is a slice through the, through the flow volume, and the color is mapped to vector field magnitude. So slow flow, this is slow moving flow, is mapped to dark blue, and then the faster flow is mapped to red. Right? This is sort of your RGB color map. Is that like air or water going against the flow? It's fluid flow, yeah. Yeah, that's right, fluid flow. Passing, it's like imagine you have a tank of fluid flow and you stick a cylinder in the middle. And then you try to figure out how does the flow move around? How does that how is that interaction? Okay, I think I might have a a, a demo. Do I have a demo? I don't is that is this the one I have? Okay, I I might. That's not the one. <laughs> but this this one. This one is actually used to be an animated demo of just slicing through the volume. You have to use your imagination on that one. <laughs> Now, you, you learned in computer graphics, you, basically, that objects and shapes were composed of what? 
Anybody remember that computer graphics, Carlo? Triangles, exactly. Here we're gonna we're gonna flip you on your head and propose the idea of things being composed of cubes rather than triangles. And this is like um, you know, you, the teapot, you see the teapot, like that's Graphics 101, it's the standard object. The teapot and the Stanford Bunny, right, those are the standard objects. This is the teapot, but not composed of triangles anymore, composed of small cubes. It doesn't look so great, does it? But this is the idea behind, this is the idea for the next, I don't know how many lectures, 20,000 lectures? No, not that many. But the next bunch of lectures, the data is instead of stored on triangles, well, the data is stored on cubes. And this is somebody trying out this idea for the you know one of the very first times way back in 1979. However, the the smaller those cubes are, the greater the the better the approximation to the surface of the teapot is actually. And this, so you can imagine shrinking those, those cubes. And in fact, at some point the approximation by cubes is going to be even more accurate than the triangles. Which is surprising. Can anybody imagine why that would be? It's hard, it's, it's hard to imagine, hard to believe maybe. Maybe it's a shock. But there's a reason. I guess it's a difficult question. It's because a real teapot, anybody have a teapot at home? A real teapot has a thickness, right? Cubes have a thickness. Triangles have no thickness, they're infinitely thin. So they're an approximation, and cubes are an approximation too. But cubes are able to approximate objects with thickness now. Triangles generally don't do that. Right? If the cubes are too big, the, the funky ridges, that's it, you see. And we already sort of went over this term, but just to make sure we have it covered. Aliasing, this is one definition of, of aliasing. There are more definitions. A rendering technique that assigns to pixels the color of the primitive being rendered, regardless of whether that primitive covers all or only a portion of the pixel's area. This results in jagged edges or jaggies. And then there are anti-aliasing techniques. A rendering technique that assigns pixel colors based on the fraction of the pixel's area that is covered by the primitive being rendered. Anti-aliased rendering reduces or eliminates the jaggies that result from aliased rendering. So, aliasing uh, sort of appears as jagged, sharp edges, and anti-aliasing makes the edges smoother. It's like a smoothing operator. In this example, that's a very alias teapot. <clears throat> Here are, here are some, here's the example that I was going to show. So these are surfaces, but they're not triangles. They are cubes, right? They're not triangles. They don't really actually have a thickness, actually. So this is... One example, it's, it's certainly it's possible to, to have other examples and, and more interesting examples. We did show one example already. Did it, does anybody happen to remember which one it was already? It was, um, was it, I can't remember if it was the last lecture or two lectures ago when we started talking about volume visualization. I think it was two lectures ago. Remember I showed the, the virtual reality example, the, the movie of virtual reality? 
with the person looking at the head, and with the, the beating heart, and the kidneys and all that stuff. That was a volume visualization. All the surfaces were composed of voxels in that example. Anybody remember that? It was in the other lecture theater. Okay, that is the end of the introduction, right, that if you want to read some special details about this topic, that's a good book chapter to have a look at. And let's move on to the next piece.